Did you ever came across a question like this one from one of the reviewers of your latest manuscript? The chances you have are quite high, since it's a pretty common question in most studies involving patients or animal studies. But how can you answer it? By showing how to calculate the sample size using power analysis. In this video, we're going to dive into an essential topic for researchers, calculating sample size using power analysis. So, let's get started. First, let's clarify what sample size and power analysis mean. Sample size refers to the number of participants or observations in your study. Power analysis, on the other hand, helps you determine the minimum sample size needed to detect a specific effect or difference between groups with a certain level of confidence. To calculate sample size, we need to consider three key factors, effect size, significance level, and power. The effect size represents the magnitude of the effect you expect to observe in your study. The significance level, often denoted as alpha, A, determines the threshold for rejecting the null hypothesis. Lastly, power, usually denoted as 1B, is the probability of correctly rejecting the null hypothesis when the alternative hypothesis is true. Now, let's jump into the step-by-step -step process of calculating sample size using power analysis. You can find this easy and free-to-use website to perform the power analysis in the link in the description. Step 1. Determine the effect size. This requires a good understanding of your research area and the specific effect you are investigating. Effect size can be measured in various ways, depending on the type of analysis you're conducting. Step 2. In this website you can easily calculate your sample size. First choose if your study consists in two independent groups or one study groups against the population. Next, choose if you have a dichotomous or continuous variable. You can now select incidence of the two groups or mean as well as standard deviation from the literature and the increase or decrease of group 2 compared to group 1. Step 3. Choose the significance level. The significance level determines how confident you want to be in your results. The most common value is 0.5, which corresponds to a 95 confidence level. However, you can adjust this based on the specific requirements of your study. Step 4. Determine the desired power. Power is typically set to a value between 0.8 and 0.9, indicating an 80 to 90 chance of detecting the effect, if it exists. Again, you can adjust this based on your specific needs. Step 5. Hit Calculate. Step 6. Evaluate the results. The Power Analysis software will provide you with the recommended sample size based on your inputs. However, keep in mind that this is an estimate, and you might need to round up to a whole number or consider other practical factors, such as participant recruitment limitations or budget constraints. And there you have it. A step-by-step -step guide on calculating sample size using power analysis. Remember, having an appropriate sample size is crucial for generating reliable and accurate results in your research. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more informative content. Also, let us know in the comments if you have any questions or if there are any specific topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.